everybody, it's Lyra from Lyra Gaming, and in today's Lost Ark video, we are going to be talking about engraving. We're going to be talking about why it's so confusing for so many people, and I'm going to do as much of a beginner proof, very uh, engraving for dummies edition tutorial slash beginner guide. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. If you do, make sure to drop a like. Let me know your thoughts on this guide in the comments, and let's go. All right, the first thing I want to talk about is possibly the main reasoning why people that are new get so confused about engraving. And I think the main culprit is the fact that you get introduced to this way too early, uh, basically at a position when you do not have access to jewelry that has uh, engraving effects on them. And then you're going to get some random stone that's going to give some random possible engraving effects. And then you get an example random book. And I believe, I don't know if it's the same for absolutely everybody, but I believe that drops of, eth, uh, drops of Ether was for me what I got. And it gave me a couple notes. The problem that I had is that even with the random stone I got and that it wasn't good enough or powerful enough for me to actually get any full buffs. And I'll talk about what that means. So in short, you're introduced to the system when you are not complete. You cannot get nodes or little buff points, as we'll talk about in a second, from jewelry. You're not going to get that until you hit level 50. I believe once you kind of start getting gear that's 304 and above, the gear will start having random engraving effects. Here is an example of one of my pieces of jewelry on the right-hand side. And as you see below, Below the basic and bonus effects, you're going to see my random engraving effects. This one happens to have preemptive strike node plus one and a negative move speed reduction. We'll talk about what that all means. But basically, the moral of the story is if you're watching this or you watch other videos before you were level 50, they're telling you about, okay, you've got to get at all these points and you're going to stack them from your jewelry. You're going to stack them from your stones. You're going to stack them from the books. And you're looking at your inventory and realizing, wait, I don't have all this. What's wrong with my game? Why does this not make sense? So if you're not 50 yet, either wait till you hit level 50 and come back and watch this video. Or if you want to get educated, keep on watching it. And I'll explain piece by piece each one of these sections and what they do and how you're really going to make this all work. All right. So now that you know why you possibly may have been initially confused when you looked at your gear and wondering why you're missing certain elements. Let's talk about what the whole goal of engraving is. Basically, if you go under your inventory, so on PC, it's by default hitting P, and then you're gonna normally be looking at your gear. If you click on the engraving tab, basically what we're trying to get is a various uh, amounts of buffs. And realistically, early on, you may get between one, two, maybe three buffs rather early. And you're also gonna, unfortunately, gonna be gathering up some negative buffs, and we'll talk about that. And the way that you earn these buffs that can either be class specific, like here for my little paladin character, my blessed aura, or something more generic, you are going to, I'm going to be gathering these nodes. So for each tier of each buff, you're going to need five nodes. And we'll talk about in a second how to get those. So for example, for my character, it's very important to get blessed aura up. And so if I mouse over this, you'll notice it says I have in white highlighted here level one of this. And you can also hit level two and level three. And as it says here, I need to have five nodes for level one, 10 for level two, and 15 for level three. And basically this gets more and more powerful. So as you see here, I have a total of seven nodes. So I have enough to unlock the first tier but not enough to unlock the second or third tier. So I need three more to get level two of this and an additional five after that to get level three. Now, however, I am efficient when it comes to divine protection. This is a second uh, kind of buff that we're getting uh, engraving because I have five out of five of that. And then unfortunately, I have one negative. I am currently receiving a minus 2% move speed modifier. 
And if I kept getting this, it can go to minus 4 and minus 6. And we'll see exactly where these negatives come from in just a second. So that's the whole idea. Now you'll also notice I have other ones that have not been activated. So my awakening, I have 4 out of 5. And if I get somehow one more, I would be able to get this awakening effect level 1 and so forth. And you're going to notice everything else where you have at least one node from your gear on, it's going to show it here. Positive and negative. And you can always mouse over it, and it's going to tell you exactly if you hit five nodes, either positive or negative, what that's going to mean. So this is with my current gear, what I'm kind of working towards, either on purpose when it comes to Blessed Aura and Awakening, or by complete accident as uh, it is with like strong will and the negatives, because obviously I don't want the negatives, but there's no way around it sometimes. So that's what engravings are. They're just extra buffs that will impact different parts of your games. Okay, so now we're gonna talk about sources of nodes. And there's three sources. You're gonna be getting a lot of them, potentially, from your kind of stone slots. And early on, you're gonna get access to one stone, that you're going to get various qualities of them and then eventually you're going to unlock a second stone you're going to be able to get two different slots that are based off books that you can gather and upgrade we'll talk about that and then each of your jewelry slots to your neck piece your two earrings and to your two rings will also have positive and negative nodes and these are random when you find on high level gear this is why people say these are very can potentially be very valuable on the auction house so let's look at these one at a time. All right, so let's start with stones. So you're going to get, this is basically the, one of the first things you're going to get. And this is one that I saved from early on. And it can be a little confusing. You'll notice this one, it is a raw stone. And you can see right off the bat, it says random engraving effects. It has a chance at shield piercing, which is one of the different buffs. Master escape of escape and... Then it has a negative uh, one that has defense reduction. So these are the ones that will come on this uh, if you were to actually facet this. And we'll talk about that. Faceting is basically like working the stone and turning it from a raw stone to one that you can equip. So here, for example, is an epic version one I have. Here's a raw one. And here is one that says, this is my outstanding stone of birth. This is one that has awakening and divine protection. And I already kind of worked it. So first thing first, you're going to want to find one of these stones. And you're going to find them early on. You get these as crest rewards. But mainly you're going to find them in dungeons uh, and different high end game activities. You're going to get random stones. You're going to want to check them out to see if they have the buffs that you want. So this one, for example, if you don't care about Master's Tenacity, Master of Escape, this is useless for you. Same here. This one is Raid Captain and Expert. I didn't care about either of those. So I did care about Awakening, and I didn't mind Divine Protection. I mainly wanted Divine awa or Awakening. This is why I chose this. So let's just say you're going to take one of these, and you want to turn them from a raw stone you got and, and so that you can equip it. So let's take a look at what you have to do for that. So what you need to do is on your map, this is Lutera Castle. I use this as an example because this is one of the very first locations to go to. And one second, I'm blocking it. So this little icon right here, Ability Stone Cutter, you can find it in any major city. It has this kind of blue icon, blue gem of sorts. So you're going to go to this NPC and you're going to talk to them. Okay. And it's going to already show you all of your stones that are available for you to facet. Now you're going to have this interface here. And so what's very important is you have to, you have to 100% complete all of this you have to take your chances in order to make this viable. So, for example, we're going to click this on this uh, shield piercing. And we have a chance. So we had a 75% chance to get a plus one. Every time you have four chances. So at best, you could get plus four towards shield piercing. But if you are very unlucky, you get plus zero. And that'll be trash. So let's see what happens here. I'm just going to go again, miss, hit, and hit. So we get a plus three. Three out of four ain't bad. That's actually quite good if we actually wanted this. Then we do the same thing for the second one. Again, we have to, even if you don't care about Masters of Escape. So we're going to go with that. Has similar chances. On this one, two of four, 50% chance. So that's below the average. Because you notice it started at 75% chance. 
and went all the way down to 55 so this one did not do so well and then again we don't want any negatives but unfortunately we do so here you want the opposite you don't want the plus ones you want to miss on all of them so let's see what we get so okay really unlucky wow okay so that was pretty horrible you notice that we did quite well on shield piercing but it went about as bad as we could consider on the defense or on the negative defense reduction so this is now complete and in theory if you wanted to i could go into my inventory notice now it actually says shield piercing node plus three master of escape plus two and uh defense reduction so let's see what happens when i equip that so let's put this in here in my inventory and now it had a bunch of messages that a bunch of my effects got canceled so now i still have blessed aura for my other effects but i lost everything else and now i have defense reduction unfortunately because i hit five out of five from between this and my other gear i now get this minus five percent defense which is absolutely horrible for a defensive character so i would never ever want this so i'm going to go back under gear and i'm going to equip this one instead okay and basically this is now trash you could break it down or sell it whatever you want to do with it but it's absolutely useless but that is are the stones in a nutshell it's total rng what you're gonna get so basically you're gonna end up at end game getting dozens of these and hopefully one of them is going to be good and over time you're going to get higher and higher item level versions of this and the ultimate end game is to get like a perfect stone for your build that gives you all the pluses to your best skills and hopefully you roll a plus five on both of them and then you hopefully don't get any negatives or i mean if you get some negatives it's not the end of the world so that is the first item now let's take a look at the second format all right so the next kind of way that you're gonna get these nodes are through these books you're gonna find a ton of different books and they're gonna be specific to either class specific buffs or general buffs so if if you hit p again and you're on your user interface and you click on one of these two slots initially you may have nothing here that's fine you click on them it actually shows you the full list of generic ones you can unlock and it also tells you what generic ones you've memorized in your character so i had drops of ether uh, that i have 20 out of 24 so it unlocked it nothing else has worked so i'll show you how this looks if i were to memorize this shield piercer book so this is the green quality i'm going to right click on it and now you'll notice here if i go under shield piercer and i have it says one out of 20. you have to get 20 of these books in order to unlock tier one of the effect now you'll also have ones up here you can select class bonuses and so for my job i have blessed aura or judgment and they're paladin exclusive so i care because i'm a support paladin i care about blessed aura so what i did is i found 20 green quality books and memorized them and as soon as you get 20 it unlocks this for you and you'll notice here it says it is worth power nodes points plus three and so you can go ahead and even though i unlocked it times one i can apply it to both of these slots and so you'll notice they're each worth plus three so under my engraving this is where i get six out of seven of my blessed auras and all of a sudden that allows me to get this effect right off the bat now you can go further on this and after the, collecting the green books of this you can also get the same titled book so for example i'm looking for blessed aura books and you're gonna want ones that are blue so once you use your you get 20 out of 20 on your green book then you want to get 20 20 out of your blue books now more specifically those blue books are actually worth plus six nodes and then there's going to be two more tiers. So after you get 20 of 20 on the blue books, you're then going to need to select epic purple books. And those are going to buff them to plus nine, plus nine, if you were to duplicate them. And then finally, there's a legendary tier. And again, you guessed it. You need to collect 30 of those. And they're going to be worth plus 12, plus 12. Now at that point, if you notice, to max out any one ability, it's plus 15. So if you get 
uh, any kind of book to plus 12, you've got 12 out of 15. And then you should be able to relatively easily at that point get an extra plus three from uh, a combination of either your stone or more likely than not your jewelry. And so what you're going to want to do is to have two separate books, each at legendary, which will get them to plus 12. Let's say get the plus three to finish them off from jewelry. And then to get your major progress on your third and potentially fourth buff here, you would be working off of your stones as a baseline with any remaining progress coming from your jewelry that you will have developed. Now these, these books, again, they're random. You can get them from dungeons. They can be traded also on the market. So some people make a lot of money selling these. And then for you, if you have, you've been saving up gold and you're getting bad RNG and you're not getting the books you want. So if I'm not getting the correct blessed aura books for me, I can buy them off the auction house as well. So that's the matter of that. It's just as simple as that. You just got to get the correct books. And it's 20, 20, and 20. And then you plot them into these slots as you see fit. All right. And now we have the final part. And this is the most complicated of the three options, I guess you could say, because it's so very random. And on top of that, you do not get access to this when you first access the system. And I don't remember what level I was when the tutorial came up. I want to say I was in my 30s, but it was a while ago. So it has to do with your equipment, uh, your jewelry equipment. And as I mentioned, jewelry equipment will not start having random engraving effects until after you're level 50. And specifically, I don't think it even drops on the level 250 gear. I think I first started noticing it when I was getting the 304 blue quality gear from endgame missions and dungeons. And obviously here I have level 340 that has it. So why is this kind of tricky? It's tricky because you're going to want to have bonus effects that are good for your class and then also random engraving effects. So just a very quick note for my paladin, you'll notice here looking at this necklace, it has swiftness and endurance. I mainly care about swiftness and specialization. So all my gear here, I try and get swiftness as a priority and then specialization as I can. And then after that, I'm stacking random engravings. But notice... I just started getting this gear on my character. So I don't have very good luck on here. You'll notice my random engraving effect is preemptive strike plus one. The negative is movement speed reduction. This one here is strong will node plus two, defense reduction, and so forth. So magic stream, which I don't care about, an expert. So I have a bunch of random stuff that really, really sucks end game, but that's okay because I'm leveling up. And this is the true end game gear grind is you're going to be looking at getting the highest possible item level with also the correct random engravings. Now, because you're going to be constantly for a very long time getting better and better item level, I wouldn't invest too much time or money in gear that has the perfect random engravings if the item level is low. And that's because as far as I know, unlike your main gear on the left-hand side that you can hone and upgrade, this I haven't found any way to upgrade it. So you just got to get better equipment as you level up. So this is going to be very, very RNG he he heavy. But note that this is going to make that big difference. Again, if we're looking at here, there's six, uh, rather five items. And let's say you were able to get each one of these with a plus two uh, to a preferred kind of buff from just that you can get easily, you know, plus 10 nodes off an engraving. So that could give you two levels worth of one buff. But you could get better RNG, higher item levels are going to have better bonuses. And this is how you hear in those videos, people are saying, oh, you know, prioritize these two buffs, but then you're going to get buff three, four, maybe five. And really to get that many, you just need the highest level gear. You need really good RNG on your jewelry. You need really good RNG on your stone, but at least that's only one stone or eventually two stones that you need to max out. And then we have the books. You're going to want to look up online guides. What are the best, your, your kind of highest need uh, buffs? So like Blessed Aura for me as a paladin. And then try and get the books either on the auction house or Hope of RNG 
that you get those and you're just going to get those up uh, uh, over time but again fortunately you don't have to worry about secondary factors like you do with the jewelry where the jewelry you got to get the right stats and the right bonus effects and then the engravings and then to a limited effect obviously your stones they're also going to have multiple uh and great random engraving effects that you're going to care about so there's a little bit more energy so you combine those three and at the end you're going to get this puzzle over time this puzzle is going to be better and better you may sometimes gain or lose access to different buffs over time and you may gain or lose uh debuffs as well but that's part of kind of that end game meta don't stress about it if you're below level 50 and then when you're kind of tier one, your item levels are in the 300, even 400s. Don't worry about it too much. It's going to become more and more of an issue as your item level, your gear level gets higher and higher. So I'm 420 right now. And when I'm 420, I don't really care about this stuff. I'm just going to pick up uh, my best bonus feat or bonus effect. And then if, uh, if the random engravings are awesome, awesome. If not, I move on. We 420 along till you move on to much higher item levels all right guys this has been leroy from leroy gaming i hope you found this guide for dummies helpful if you did sound off in the comments let me know if this helped you along or not and again if you want to support the channel drop a like if you want to see more content like this on this channel do subscribe and let me know all right guys you guys have a good one i will see you in the next video